So, you've returned for another day of Halloween. Couldn't sleep? Really into horror? Or was it that you fell down a rabbit hole where it was either two drafts giving birth or this and you still chose wrong? Well, no matter your problem, no matter your need, no matter your obsession, the mad doctor himself has a cure for anything you desire. Information from your patient database tells me that last time you were here, you claimed that you feel as if there is a fog hanging over you. Now, normally a claim like this and the symptoms that you've shown would result in possible depression, manic depressive disorder, or a litany of other things. Might I suggest one thing, though? For feelings like this, it's good to surround yourself with other people. Almost like a cult, maybe even a cult classic. The Fog, the 1923 silent film. Oh, we're not, we're not talking about that one. Sorry. The Fog, the 1932 French spe. Oh, not that one either. Sorry. The Fog, the 2005. Ah, oh, damn it! Which one are we talking about? The Fog. The 1980 supernatural horror film directed by esteemed director John Carpenter, who's known for many critical hits such as Halloween, Escape from New York, Starman, among others. The Fog stars an ensemble cast with all-stars such as Adrian Barbo, Jamie Lee Curtis, Tom Atkins, Janet Lee, Hall Holbrook, among others. This film was not originally a hit at the box office. It only grossed around $20 million, but has since, in the 30-plus years, become a cult classic amongst viewers. The film tells the story of a small town in California, Antonio Bay, where paranormal activity starts to transpire over the town and a fog starts to sweep through after the town priest father malone discovers a journal left by his grandfather he finds out the story that in 1880 six individuals who were considered founders of the town sank a ship named the elizabeth dane so that its owner would not establish a nearby colony now this fog brings with it the sunken ship, the Elizabeth Dane, and the ship and its former inhabitants have come back for six lives. Of course, swearing the revenge moniker of six must die. So throughout the rest of the film, characters such as Nick Castle, Elizabeth Soley, Andy Wayne, Kathy Williams, Sandy Fidel, and of course, Father Malone must band together to stop this mysterious fog. And not to spoil the ending for you, but this film ends on such a happy, family-friendly note, of course, with a decapitation. A receipt bill from our rehabilitation clinic shows that last October... You stayed 13 days and 13 nights in room 1406. Is that correct? Well, 
I know that room's sort of plain, drab. I know you probably didn't experience much healing there. Might I suggest, if you choose another stay, the room next door. Room 1408. 1408. The psychological horror film released in 2007 that was directed by Michael Hafstrom and, of course, based on the short story named 1408 by author Stephen King. No, that's Larry King. (sighs) That's King George. Oh, now, come on, that's just Stephen Moser. That's a handsome man right there. Anywho, 1408 stars John Cusack as Mike Enslin, a skeptical author who normally writes books based on supernatural, spooky things that he himself does not believe in. He receives a postcard one day depicting the Dolphin, a hotel in New York, and it has a message on it telling him not to enter room 1408. Mike sees this as a challenge and books a stay in that room. Upon arrival, he meets the hotel manager, Gerald Olin, of course played by the very talented Samuel L. Jackson, who informs Mike that no one has ever lasted more than one hour in room 1408, and almost 60 people have died. Of course, this does not stop Mike as he does enter the room. A clock with a countdown begins from 60 minutes, and after this, Mike starts to encounter and see ghosts, cold temperatures, lookalikes, floods, and it all leads to Mike believing that what he saw and what he experienced was just a nightmare. However, toward the end, the hotel operator informs Mike that he can either die or continue to relive what he has experienced over and over and over again. Mike seemingly destroys the whole facade of 1408 after lighting it on fire. And we see at the end of the film, he is victorious. However, there are actually three different endings to this film and they all end in different ways. Reports taken last time you were here show that you're feeling overlooked. Like people don't notice you. Like you have a lot to offer to the world, but a lot of people haven't found that out yet. Well, lucky for you, I have just the thing. Drag Me to Hell, the 2009 horror film co-written and directed by Sam Raimi, who is known for his Evil Dead series, the Spider-Man trilogy from 2002 to 2007, and even the upcoming Marvel Cinematic Universe film, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Of course, Drag Me to Hell also stars Allison Lohman as Christine Brown and Justin Long as Clay Dalton. The film course starts with a Hispanic couple who is seeking help for their son who has been cursed and fallen ill after stealing a gypsy necklace. Fast forward to present day Los Angeles where Christine Brown is a bank loan officer who is competing for a promotion at work. But in order to receive that promotion, her boss told her she needs to get better at tough decision making. So, in an effort to look good for that promotion, Christine denies an elderly lady by the name of Sylvia Ganoush a third extension on her mortgage, to which afterwards, Ganoush attacks Christine and places a curse on her. Christine and her boyfriend, Clay Dalton, visit a fortune teller who tells them that a powerful demon is now haunting and tormenting Christine and will drag her to hell after three days. Christine, in an effort to rid herself of this, 
tries a sacrifice, a seance, and trying to give this curse to someone else, but ultimately it is to no avail, as at the end of the film, she is indeed dragged to hell. (sighs) I get it, drag me to hell, I got it now. It looks here that this is your 25th visit to this clinic. And thankfully, we have just what you need. It says here that you're feeling overlooked. You're feeling like you're being drugged to hell. Looks like you're looking to add a little Halloween flavor to your life. Well, let's look what we have for you here. Tell me, what comes to mind when you see this image? The 2000 New Line Cinema film The Little Vampire, directed by Ulrich Edel and based on the children's book series by Angela Somar Bodenberg, stars Jonathan Lipnicki as Tony Thompson. Tony and his family have recently moved to Scotland from the United States. And since then, Tony is dealing with not only being harassed, but he's experiencing reoccurring nightmares, specifically about vampires. Sooner than later, Tony is actually mistaken for a vampire by Rudolph, a young vampire played by Rollo Weeks. Rudolph and his family are actually being hunted by the evil vampire hunter Rookery, played by Jim Carter. Jim Carter, you might know from a little unknown show known as Downton Abbey. I wonder whatever happened to that show. Throughout the film, Tony and Rudolph are on the hunt for a mysterious magical amulet that Rudolph informs Tony can turn vampires into humans. Throughout the film, they deal with not only trying to evade rookery, some weird fetish? I don't know. But their family is trying to get this amulet to become humans and break this curse. So throughout the film, young Tony and young Rudolph hunt for this amulet, which toward the end of the film we find out was in Tony's bedroom all along. And at the end of the film, they finally defeat the evil rookery and Rudolph and his family are successful in becoming humans. Well, you've done well so far. This is sort of a short intermission break where you can just relax. Sit back and relax. Well... How have things been? Seen any cool movies lately? Anything good on TV? You know, I was watching this one show lately, and it amazed me at how each season there was something that reminded me of you. And your obsession, your love, your building appetite for Halloween. Ah, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. The police comedy series created by Dan Gore and Michael Shore. Of course, starring the ensemble cast of Andy Samberg, Stephanie Beatriz, Terry Crews, Melissa Fumero, Joe Latruglio, Chelsea Peretti, Andre Brower, Dirk Blocker, Joel McKinnon Miller, among many, many, many others, airing on Fox, NBC, and lasting eight seasons. But of course, they had memorable episodes, but none more memorable than their Halloween heist episodes. Of course, in season one, with the first Halloween episode titled, well, how apropos Halloween, 
where the whole heist plot is where Jake attempts to steal Captain Holt's Medal of Valor. Season 2 features the uh, again apropos named Halloween 2 where this time Jake attempts to steal Captain Holt's watch which is on his wrist. Season 3 features now this episode it's got to be a good name right? Oh, it's Halloween Part 3. Oh. Well, after Halloween 1, Jake is up. Halloween 2, Captain Holt has a victory. Now, in a tiebreaker heist, Jake and Captain Holt both attempt to steal a crown. Season 4 features, well, you guessed it, Halloween 4, but of course, all cool and stylized as Halloween IV, where Jake and Captain Holt are joined by Amy Santiago, and they are all attempting to steal a plaque. Halloween 5, now this one, whoever thought of this one was pretty cool. Halloween, of course, the, the, the V for the, the Roman numeral of 5. I'll explain later. This episode, Captain Holt, Jake, and Amy explain that this heist is open to everyone, which is now including other characters such as Gina, Charles, Terry among others and season 6 is a little different twist this is centered around Cinco de Mayo and this time everyone in the squad is attempting to steal Scully's medical bracelet the final heist episode takes place in season 7 titled Valo Valo Easter this of course being the only heist to occur on three different holidays Of course, Valentine's Day, Halloween, and Easter. Where the whole squad are attempting to steal three gems from Bill, a reoccurring character from many of the Halloween heist episodes. All in all, a lot of great, fun, clever Halloween humor and escapades. Well... It appears that all of my questions and tests are complete. You did fantastic. I hope that this little insight and these little teasers into some possible remedies, some possible healing methods for you have helped. And as of now, there's only one thing for me to suggest and one thing for me to prescribe to you. And remember... Anytime you need a fix, always come our way.